Hey everybody, Mom H with Honey Hollow Homestead. Okay, before I get to Joy, I want to say some of the prepping lessons that I've learned from the disaster, disastrous flooding in East Kentucky. What we're hearing about people up in hollers like mine um, that have only one road in, one road out, uh, the only access, they are, their roads have been washed out, severely washed out. They can't get out, they can't, people can't get in, except for maybe by horseback, pack mule, even four-wheelers are having a hard time getting in, okay? Prepare. Prepare. That was a good burp, Joy. Um, I got a spray, fly spray on her again. Okay. Anyway. Water. The biggest thing has been water. Okay. Uh, because if you don't have a means to pump water, if you have a well, if you have community water, these are a lot of the things that they're dealing with. I mean, there's the contamination of the water filtration systems that they have, the septic systems. Um, I mean, for those who are fortunate enough to be above the flood line, they're still being affected by this disaster because their access um, has been washed away. Um, they are having to airlift water and MREs these people um don't mind me flies are terrible in here uh, it's like putting stuff back for disasters like this you know people say well a week's worth ahead a month's worth ahead three months ahead six months ahead people it could be months if not a, a full year before some of these people have their access restored Okay, I mean, we pray that it goes faster than that, but it is a possibility. I, because this is a once in a multiple lifetime flood. Okay, hold on a second. They love it when I wear a sleeveless shirt because they can really get a good bite on me right where I can't reach. Anyway, so. Prepping, okay, back when my mother was doing it, it wasn't called prepping. It was just called being prepared, okay, taking advantage of the good times for when the bad times hit. Well, this is definitely a bad time hitting these people, okay. Uh, hoping and praying that most of them had something put back. I don't know for sure that they did. I'm sure there must have been some preppers back in there. Um, but you know what? The people who had their homes completely washed away, I mean, you see, all you see is bare slabs, okay? Their homes are gone. Any preps that they had, they're gone. You know, they went downstream, okay? But for those who are out of the flood zone, who, who avoided the flood waters and are still being affected, you know, they would still have their preps, okay? And so they would be in a better position so that they wouldn't have to take resources that could be used to help those who lost everything. Okay? So prepping is, is not a crazy thing. It's a logical thing. Okay? It's insurance for when something like this happens. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody did. I, who would have dreamt that the floodwaters would have gone as high as they did? explaining it to my um to my family up north i said i had a house up in new jersey that was three and about three and a half stories high okay it would have been underwater and that was considered a flood zone where i was living where these people were living it was not considered a flood zone okay and everything's gone it's just gone okay so just wanted to put that out there. Prepping's not a crazy thing. 
it's a wise thing, okay? Just being prepared, putting th things back while you have the ability to do so, so that when you don't have that ability or when you need it because you can't get access to storage or what have you, is a smart thing because you just never know what life is going to bring you, okay? So that's my take today. Now, joy. Um, I, I was afraid that I was not going to have a good report for you today. Uh, because yesterday, she really did not eat good. She really did not. Um, it was a struggle uh, to get her to take anything in. Uh, I kept the water at her and the power punch uh, frequently. Now, Tuesday, when I gave her the steroid shot, she, she really ate really well. Okay, um, whether or not it was because of the steroid shot or, or not, I don't know. Um, yeah, but yesterday she really was not doing all that great. And I, I was thinking I was going to have to make that call. Um, but uh, this morning she ate really well again. Um, I communicated with the vet, um, we're on texting terms, okay, and I explained to him what I'm, what I was seeing, now, I'm not, like, painting a, glor a, a rose-colored, um, glass kind of picture for him, I'm being objective, this is what I'm seeing, this is how she's behaving, okay, she is being more vocal, she is responding to the other goats around, okay, when the goats are in the barn, and and they're calling to each other. She's responding to them. Okay. Which is something that she was not doing before. Um, is she out of the woods? No. Not by a long shot. Because she's not on her feet yet. She's also not able to hold her neck up yet. So that she can drink and eat on her own. Okay. These are things that are crucial. That she's going to need to be able to do. If she's going to survive. I'm doing the best I can repositioning her, moving her body, moving her legs, doing what I can. I'm thinking about seeing if I can prop her up on a bale of hay. Um, so that, uh, she's got a more natural position. Um, I'm going to have to get my husband down here to help me do that because I just need an extra pair of hands. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's what I'm looking at. She had, she had a really good normal poop yesterday. Okay, normal, a normal goat poop. Okay. Uh, last night she had some poops, but they were a little more clumpy. Okay. Uh, could be because she really did not eat all that good yesterday and she was relying more on the power punch than she was any nutrition she was taking in. Now, right now she's positioned, she's resting comfortably. She, she's, you know, she's got her eye closed, um, and she's doing well. Okay. Um, she was definitely looking for water. I could hear her calling uh from my cabin i could hear her which is good that's very good so anyway um i'll give her a break from camera time you can just deal with my ugly puss uh, sheba is really getting antsy she doesn't want to be in here i don't blame her not one bit um she wants to go out i might try and take her out later um since most of the mud has uh, dried up. I went, wasn't going to take her out before because it was just so muddy from all the rain we had. But it's it's been dry for a few days now. Uh, pretty much most of the mud has dried up. I can take her out and see if I can uh, let her pee, pee and poop outside. Okay. So, see if, you know, that helps her feel better. I hate that she has to have that cone on, but she, I have any choice. She has to have it on. You know, so she doesn't understand. She can't lick that sore that's on her belly. So, anyway. All right, well, that's it, people. Um, I think that's probably long enough. Um, this is Mom H. with Honey Hollow Homestead. Keep on your prayers. The people east of me really, really, really still need your prayers. They've got a long road ahead of themselves. Um, like I said, they didn't have, mo the vast majority of the population did not have flood insurance because they were not in a flood zone and um that's the thing with flood insurance you know um sorry about that these flies bite 
So I know my, I'm all jiggly. So anyway, talk to y'all later. Have a good one.